My arrows always find their marks. Hi guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. They're back with a Varus complete guide. Now, honestly, Varus has always been in the meta ever since people discovered his AP build. However, he just never really was the top of the meta. And even now, I personally don't believe he's the top of the meta just because I feel that uh, he's not a traditional DPS sort of AD carry, but he's more of like a poke style AD carry. Now, don't get me wrong, he still has a lot of damage. However, personally, I believe that he cannot be drafted in a lot of team comps and he needs a kind of like a specific team comp uh, for him to actually be drafted in. So, uh, first up, of course, um, since it's a complete guy, we haven't covered him before. We're gonna first cover his um, skills and leveling order, and then we'll proceed on to cover with. Uh, the build, the runes, the spells, and then we'll move on to the gameplay. So without further ado, we're going to jump into the practice tool. Now, Varus has three ways that you can build him. The normal attack speed kind of way, which is the, the sort of traditional AD carry kind of way, which isn't very good at the moment. The AP um, burst way, and finally, the um, on-hit lethality build. And the on-hit lethality build is the one we're going to be covering mainly today, because um, it is the most meta and the best build for him at the moment. So at level 1, you will take your Q, at level 2, your um, E, and at level 3, you will take your W, and then you proceed on to max Q, of course taking your out whenever available, and then you will max E, of course taking your out whenever available, which I missed there, and then your W last. Now, if you are going for the AP build, you would max W first, and... Of course, taking it out whenever available. And if you're going for the standard build, you do the same path as the lethality build. Alright, so now, what we're going to do is we're going to head over to our favorite spot um, in the river and explain what all his skills and abilities do. Now, his passive is uh, really a simple one-liner. When he gets a kill on an enemy champion, he gets 40% attack speed, whereas if he gets a kill on anything else like a monster or a minion, he gets 20% attack speed. Um, bonus. So it is um, not very useful for the lethality virus, but it can be very useful in lane or in like clutch situations where you and your uh, enemy is very low health and you need to just clutch out a, a kill. So here I'm just going to quickly try to demonstrate it here. Um, I didn't get the kill there. Boom. So here I get actually a 20% attack bonus and it will fade off after a while. So as you guys can see, I'm attacking a little bit slower now. Now that I've gotten the kill on the minion, I will get a little bit of an attack speed increase. Now, uh, you can actually tell that from the glow of his bow. So let me see if I can actually get an example here. Um, let's target that small minion. Boom. Uh, you see his bow has a uh, blue glow. That means he has the in uh, increased attack speed. Now it's just faded so he doesn't have it anymore. Now his Q is an arrow. Like that. So you can tap, tap it to just shoot. However, you can also hold it. Now the longer you hold it, the more damage it will do and the longer range it will be. However, uh, it will actually slow you down. So here is my normal movement speed. If I hold it, the range and the damage increases, but I'm slowed, and then I can release it. And yeah, that's basically how it works. Pretty simple. Now for his W, this is your tank shredding ability. Each auto attack you do on an opponent will give a blight stack. So for example, boom, it has one blight stack, two blight stacks, three blight stacks, and the maximum is is 3. When you cast any of your abilities, you will consume the Blight Stacks to do extra on-hit magic damage. So that's why you max W for um, the AP build. Now it also has an active. Now the active is basically, it increases the damage of your Q, if I'm not mistaken. Let me actually just take a quick look at it. I believe it just increases the damage of your Q. So the active yeah, doubles the bonus on-hit damage from your um, Black Quiver passive, so it also doubles the damage of um, you exploding your Black Stacks, and uh, as mentioned, you do get an increased damage on your Q, and it gives missing health damage as well, so really good for a finisher. So here, we're just going to give it the three Black Stacks, boom, we activate it, and boom, we get a lot of extra damage. Now his E, it's an AoE ability, pretty pretty short range, boom. Gives uh, Grievous Wounds in the area. 40% Grievous Wounds to be exact. Yeah, so that's what it does. His, his up is a relatively short range skill shot that roots the first target hit. And actually gives them Blight Stacks as well. So here, 
We're just gonna show it off. Boom. It gives one blight stack, two blight stacks, three blight stacks. It does not give instantly three blight stacks, but it does uh, give three blight stacks after a while. So it sort of takes like a second to add a blight stack. So um, what you can actually do with that is if I put zero cooldown, if you want to kind of all in, you you all press uh, your W and charge your Q and you release it when the blight stacks charge to full. Now something else to note about the ultimate is it can spread around uh, enemy other enemy champions. So here, I'm gonna put two uh, enemies close close by and one more here. So if I hit it on this guy, it will spread, boom, to all of these people, uh, assuming you have vision of them, of course. Now I actually want to remove uh, this dummy. Actually, I removed all of them at once. <laughs> so. Okay, so we're gonna put an enemy dummy here. I do what I must. Boop. So it can spread. Actually, what I wanted to really show is it can spread. Okay, let's actually put one here. It can spread multiple times. So let's put one here. If I hit on this guy, it spreads to this guy, and then it can spread to this guy as well. So you can pretty much, the, the chain will keep on spreading as long as there are enemies to spread to. So this is why his ultimate is really really good in um, team fights, like the drag, like dragon fights, baron fights. It's really really high impact because generally a lot of the enemies will be doing the objective. So you can catch one of them out with his um, ultimate and it will spread to the rest of the team. So even if it doesn't, minimally it makes the team want to scatter and whoever you hit with it, uh, unless it's a tank, is more or less dead. So with that out of the way, let's actually just jump straight into the build runes as well as the spells. Victory. Now, first up what I'm going to do is, I'm, this is the Lethality build. So I'm actually going to show off the standard build and the AP build really quickly. So this is the standard build um, in case you guys want to use it. You really need Rune and Hurricane to spread your Blighted stacks. This is the AP build. You need Nashers for the attack speed and the rest is pretty self-explanatory. Some AP builds even go for Rune and Terry King to, to spread these stacks as well, but ma a majority of them do not. So now we're going to talk about our main build, which is the Lethality build. So we're going to first up discuss the build. So, uh, the first item you get is Mana Mune. So of course, getting the Mana Mune as your first item, you want to start off with the Sapphire Crystal and then go for a tier as soon as possible and then build into your Mana Mune. Now unlike other champions like Ezreal, um, you do not want to uh, get any other item first. You want to just complete the Mana Mune straight up as fast as possible. Because unlike Ezreal, Varus doesn't stack um, the Mana Mune all that quickly. His cooldowns is not as spammable as Ezreal so it takes a lot longer to stack up the Mana Mune. So you want to get it up to the Mana Mune as fast as possible so you can evolve it to the Mirror Mana as fast as possible. Then the next uh, Lethality item you want to get is the Yomu's Ghost Blade. Now the, the real reason for this is technically you do have a choice between Dust Blade and Ghost Blade but Ghost Blade is just better because as an immobile ADC who doesn't have any dash skills at all you need the mobility so the momentum passive from the Ghost Blade is really useful of course. And then after that, you get the uh, Ionian Boots of Lucille. Now, you always go for the Ionian Boots of Lucille. You don't go for any other boots. The Lifesteal Boots isn't very useful on you because you don't really do a lot of sustained DPS. The, there is no point of getting any defensive boots because if you get caught out, you're going to die anyway. So there, there's no point of that. So best to get the Lucille Boots to get off more Qs so you can do more poke damage. And for your Boot Enchant, generally in 75% of games, I actually go for the Proto Belt. Now just because you don't have any mobility at all other than Flash, it's really nice to have another small dash um, just to help out with your mobility issues. The other 25% of matches, I will go for the Zhonya's. I never actually go for QSS on Varus himself, just because how if you get CC, if enemies are on top of you, you're basically dead anyway. It's sort of like how like a Zix works. If like you get onto a Zix, he's basically kind of dead. Actually, Zix even has his uh, second skill, his W to try to escape. Varus doesn't even have that. So um, I don't actually take QSS. In the 25% of games, I take Zhonya's. It's normally because there are multiple things to Zhonya's. Like if there is a Z and a Fizz in the enemy team, I might uh, want to take Zhonya's. Or if let's say there is a Z and a Rengar on the enemy team, I'll take a Zhonya's. But if there's only one Fizz, um, no Z, no Rengar, no none of that, I, I won't be taking um, 
um, stasis because reason is sometimes you just need that stasis to you know just negate that damage like there's nothing you can do when a Rengar comes from behind and jumps on you a proto belt uh, won't help with the one shot but you need the stasis other than that I will go for the, for the proto belt now after that you go for the Serelda's grudge now of course you can also go for Moral Reminder, he applies both Serelda's Grudge and Moral Reminder very very well because your arrow can hit through all 5 enemies, it pierces, so you can actually go for either or, but most people, will, including myself, will agree that Serelda's Grudge is better just because of the utility you get from the slow which helps your entire team. Of course Grievous Wounds also helps your entire team, but you do also have Grievous Wounds from your uh, from your E, which is your Hail of Arrows, so you, you don't have any uh, slows in your kit, so the slow from Serelda's Grudge is really um, helpful in that sense. Then of course you go for the Dust Blade of Drakthar. Now this gives uh, 55 AD and 15 uh, armor penetration. So it's the, the so-called the highest damage um, lethality item in the game. So you go for Dust Blade after that. Now technically you could go for uh, Umbral Glaive as well but most people agree that that isn't really the best item. <laughs> it, I mean, it does give you the trap slash ward removal, but Dust Blade and Yomu's Ghost Blade is just simply better. Now, for your last item, you go for a Guardian Angel. Now, I have said if they get onto you, you're basically dead. But if you have a Guardian Angel, you can revive. And if you ult them and then you go into your revive, you can sort of try to survive. And in your, you can buy time for your team to sort of come and help you out. So, yeah. Now, on to the runes. Now, for the Thali virus, you go for Airy. Now, there isn't an Arcane Comet in um, Wild Rift. So, Airy is your next best option, which gives you uh, extra poke. So, basically, whenever you land your arrows in lane, you gain... Uh, the Airy will attack as well. So, basically, you just get extra poke. And for your next couple of runes, there are actually a lot of options. Now, for the first minor rune, actually, technically, every single rune here is viable, except probably Triumph. Now, Brutal is good just because your early game poke is going to hurt a lot more and your enemies probably got, going to have to back more often. Gathering Storm is really good because of how uh, Varus scales into the late game. Like You have to charge up your mana immune and you have to get a number of items uh, before you actually start to do damage. I would say you have to get at least up to your Yomus and, and or your Sereldas to actually start to do damage. Like With the Yomus, you start to do damage already. With Sereldas, then you start to actually hurt. So you do take a long time to actually start to do damage. So Gathering Storm is not a bad option as well. Hunter Vampirism also works because you don't actually have any life still in this build. So with Hunter Vampirism, it could be your only form of life steal because hitting your arrows non-stop, you can heal a bit by a bit, especially when you're far, far away from, from the main fight. So Hunter Vampirism can work as well. I don't go for Triumph. I actually, I personally go for Weakness. So Weakness, what it does is when you impair the enemy uh, champions, they take more damage. Now, you can trigger this yourself with your uh, ultimate, which is the main reason why you take Weakness. So generally, the person you ult is the person you're trying to burst anyway. So I just personally, I just ult them, press W, and then ch full charge my Q and burst them down. So I use Weakness just for that purpose. And the last one is Champion now. Champion is if you're confident of, uh, you know, not dying in general, which no one really can be, I would say. But I personally don't like the high risk nature of champion on this particular champion. Uh, kind of weird pun there, but yeah. So I will take it on champions like Ezreal or uh, or maybe even Zix, who I kind of feel safer with. But I don't feel safe uh, taking it on Varus, so I personally don't. But the best rune you can take on Varus if you're confident is Champion and the second best rune if you don't want Champion is probably Gathering Storm just because you get guaranteed scaling and then I and then probably followed by Weakness which is my personal preference so really with Varus the first minor rune you can really take wh whatever you want for the domination tree now for the the resolve rune uh, personally I like to go for Bone planing. Now the reason for this is that you're always very very far away. So in this case, I've always talked about how bone planing is very bad because of its long cooldown in lane and how easy it is to proc. But in this case, Varus generally doesn't really take poke in lane. You shouldn't really be that close to the enemies in the first place. So if you're getting poked, and uh, or if not, if you're getting poked, if you're getting damage, you're most likely getting all in by the enemy. In which case, bone planing will really help you out. But if uh, you don't want to take bone planing, probably another good option would be. Um, really nothing much else. It would just be whatever uh, else you would uh, prefer uh, as a personal preference. But personally, you know, bone planning is just the best. And lastly, Sweet Tooth, of course, with the heal and the mana. And other than that, nothing really um, too useful. Maybe, perhaps, a uh, mana flow ban if you really feel that you need mana. But by and large, Sweet Tooth is the best. So, 
For your spells, flash, um, always, of course, and for your second spell, it's either barrier or heal. Now, there's two schools of thought. The first school of thought is that you take a barrier because if you someone jumps on you, you at least have a better chance of survival with the barrier. But the second school of thought is that if someone jumps on you, the barrier is not going to help that much anyway, and you're probably going to die. So you might want to take heal instead for not only the movement speed and the heal, but also the fact you can help out your allies, your support, or any other allies. Personally, um, I actually... I actually go for barrier most games, but I actually do think heal is better. I have no idea why I'm always taking barrier, just that now verbalizing it, I'm kind of thinking that heal is better, so yeah. That is pretty much it for um, covering the build runes and the spells. Now we're actually going to jump into the gameplay. Alrighty, so on to the gameplay. Now you guys know what's coming as usual for every complete guide. If you guys enjoy watching the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Alright, so first off, as you can as you guys can see when I'm walking to lane, I actually charged up my Q and cancelled. Now that is to charge my um, Sapphire Crystal. So um, whenever you back and you're walking to lane, as long as you're not rushing to a team fight, you want to always um, charge up your Q and cancel it just to uh, get more stacks onto your tier slash mana mune slash sapphire crystal whichever one you have of course do not do that do that in lane because if your opponents see you doing that they will know that your Q is down and they can aggress onto you so you do not want to do that so now um, you know if we first up we want to talk about all the conditions that you need to actually pick the virus which there are a lot of which is why I think he isn't really that good um, but when the conditions are met, it is pr uh, you know pretty good. First up is your team. So first up for your team to pick Varus, you need a solid front line. So in this match, I have a Gallo and a Trindamir, which is a solid front line, uh, so that I can pick Varus. So the reason for that is Varus just wants to stay far away and poke. So you really need a good front line so that they can tank damage for you while you stay very very far away and keep on poking with your Q for the Dali Varus. And the second thing you need on your team is some form of consistent um, DPS uh, for physical damage. Now in this team, I have the Trindamir, which is a um, you know consistent DPS source, which is why I can go for the Varus. Now, now the next thing is the enemy's team. So now this is not as important as your team. If you meet these two criteria, you can actually pick Varus regardless of the enemy team. But there is two more conditions on the enemy bot lane, which make Varus very good. Now the first thing is a low range AD carry. Now in this game, I'm finding a Vayne, which is obviously very low range. So as you guys can see, I'm still at full health while Vayne and Alistar are both at you know, about 3 quarter health. Now that's because obviously they don't have the range to reach me and I have the range to poke them out. So if he's really good picking into something like a Kai'Sa, a Vayne or a Lucian, AD carries with short range. So uh, of course, into Kai'Sa and Lucian is a little bit more dangerous because if they decide to dash you and all in, you might be in a little bit of trouble. Now, of course, here you guys, here you guys can see uh, me charging and cancelling my uh, piercing arrow as I'm walking to lane. Should be doing it soon. There we go. I charged and cancelled. So that's what you want to do. So now the, the fourth condition is having a tank support. Now, of course, uh, Varus being a pokey style champion. If you're playing into like a Soraka, uh, I made a mistake there, walking a bit too close to us. So if you're playing into a Soraka, you know, or a Nami. Any poke that you do is going to be negated by them healing, so it really makes the Varus pick a lot less strong in lane. So of course, as I said, the latter two conditions are less important. So as long as you have constant DPS and a frontline on your team, you can pick Varus because, as I said, Varus is a more of a late game. So even if you lose lane, like into a long range, um, you know, champion or into an enchanted support which can negate your healing, it's not so bad. But if you want to maximize what Varus can do, like what I'm doing in this match, you want to have a, a constant DPS, aka my Trindamir, a frontline, aka my Trindamir and Galio, a short range AD carry, aka the Vayne, and a tank engage support on the enemy team, aka the Alistar. So this is the perfect match to pick Varus, which is why I went for the Varus pick. Now, I'm sure it's pretty obvious to you guys that I'm not a... I'm not a Varus enthusiast, I don't really love picking Varus. He is in my champion pool because I can play more or less every single AD carry, but I don't really enjoy playing Varus too much. I do not really like his playstyle of just uh, sitting very very far back and poking. I much rather have a playstyle like Kai'Sa to just ult in and you know destroy everybody or like Lucian to just dash in and destroy everybody. I don't mind playing like a 
more of a front to back play style. Like I don't mind playing someone like a Jinx, but I just don't really enjoy someone whose main damage is just through poke and not through like my auto attacks. So yeah. Anyways, enough about that. I have already covered how you should, should draft the Varus, which is really important. You really don't want to pick Varus when your team has no other consistent DPS or doesn't have a front line. If your team has like, you know, an Irelia top and a Kali mid, an Evelyn jungle and like a, a you know, Nami support, you don't really want to pick Varus because your team is going to really suffer. Varus's main point of damage is of course poking with his Q. So before team fights happen, you want to just be hovering around the objective. Let's say like dragon here you want to just be hovering around the objective i want to just be shooting my arrows and poking out the enemies before the actual fight ensues so that is what you really want to do which is what the front line really helps you with to just distract them as you're poking them before the fight really happens like this as you can see i'm still at full hp i ripped them i haven't really gotten touched because i'm just staying far away and just poking with my q as you guys can see so yeah that is Varus's main playstyle, so Varus shouldn't really be touched if at all possible. Here, Wukong um, ulting in uh, towards us for some reason. And yeah, nothing too much comes away. Nami is really low on resources, but other than that, we are all good. So Vayne, uh, you know, as you guys can see, just taking the poke. Trindamir is in the area, and I did actually hit my arrow off screen um, onto, I believe it was the Vayne or the Alistar, I'm not sure. But yeah. So the enemy actually is pretty pretty strange in this match they actually have a Lulu uh, AP Lulu um, in the top lane so uh, it's gonna be pretty weird and the AP Lulu is actually really uh, surprising about how much damage she does now I'm not advocating for AP Lulu but I'm just saying how surprising it can be uh, off meta picks how surprising off meta picks can be because just no one is really used to playing against off meta picks so they can't actually be really really strong so here obviously my team is going for the dragon fight you know i did uh, cancel one time uh, of my queue there but i generally just want to rush to the fight i don't want to be spending too much time just canceling my queues here nami finds a nice engage and me and nami combo our cc to get rid of the lulu and gets the shutdown as well here i pick up i believe it was a double kill um not too sure. Actually, I do not pick up a double kill. That was just one kill. I'm not sure what I was looking at, but yeah. So pick up one kill there. I'm still relatively untouched, um, and I'm gonna try to shoot the vein. The vein is pretty, uh, pretty low. There we go. I got the vein off screen at max range. Can't see uh, from the screen, but yeah. When you actually hold your um, arrow, you will actually zoom out. So the game actually does help you zoom out, so you can actually aim. Uh, because of course in this game it's really hard to move your camera as you're aiming because you only normally you only play with two fingers unless you play with you know three fingers depending on your play style or how many fingers you used to play I should say so yeah, our team is doing relatively well my alt is almost coming back up so we're going for the herald fight as well Varus is really strong at objective fights just because of his giant team fighting ultimate like that boom um, there is a catch there and I get the follow up CC onto the Wukong. Unfortunately, we don't actually kill the Wukong there. I've tried to hit him with the max range arrow, but uh, you know he, we do actually pick up the kill on the Wukong. But I tried to pick up who was it? I believe it was the the Fizz. Yeah, I think it was the Fizz. But I unfortunately did not connect. Here, Lulu is really low again. I'm trying to actually hit her over the wall, but unfortunately, I miss just barely. And Alistar actually goes back in onto the team, and Zed actually outs him, which is probably a little bit of overkill. Here, um, we actually had 3 men collapse on the Lulu, but Lulu, as I said, has a lot of damage and actually kills the Zed. So here, I just want to quickly back before the enemy team respawns, and I barely make it back. A really, really dangerous back position, but, you know, I, I'm 2-0 and 2 at the moment. I've picked up my Mana Mute and my Dirk as well, so I do have quite a bit of damage. And I also have my Proto Belt at the moment, just for that extra bit of mobility. In the meantime, while we we're picking up the two objectives of Vayne, has picked up an objective of her, of her own, being our bottom tower. So Vayne of course sees us coming, so she's gonna of course back off. Here I'm just clearing the minions with my Q, um, in addition to just trying to see if I can hit the Vayne. Uh, of course I cannot. So Alistar is in the lane, um, and here comes the Vayne again. Nice catch by the Nami, but unfortunately we get 4 men collapsed upon by the enemy team, and somehow they all focus uh, Nami. So I actually somehow managed to survive it with both my Flash and my Proto Belt. No idea how. 
So in the meantime, Trindamir is pressuring with the Rift Herald at mid while the enemies are trying to collapse Bot. So here, I recognize that they can actually dive Bot Tower, four men dive Bot Tower, especially with an Alistar. So I do just simply back off and just try to use my range to poke. Unfortunately, I get hit by the Fizz uh, ultimate, so as a result, I do just die. So of course, the moment you get hit by Fizz ultimate, you're just gone. So um, that's pretty unfortunate. Uh, uh, Trindamir does get the return kill onto the Fizz, putting me at a score line of 2, 1, and 3, which is not really the worst. But, you know, me and Nami did overextend a tad there, so we did get caught and punished for our mistakes. So, um, Varus, of course, when you're stuck in this kind of situation, really there is, um, it's really, really hard for you to play. Of course, I did get out there because the enemy team chose to focus on Nami instead of me. But if they chose to focus on me, I had no chance of escaping there. Alright, so now that I've respawned, my team is obviously, you know, all having uh, taking a fight at the mid lane. So, I'm just going to go over here to the bot lane to pick up the farm. The minions have pushed all the way into our second tier turret, so I can farm very, very safely <laughs> under my second tier tower. And Nami is also coming back down, so I do have vision around the river area that there is nobody there at the moment. Dragon is coming up in uh, 25 seconds, so that is the next objective to play for, of course. I'm going to try to get the bot lane pi uh, prio. Prior to the dragon, Dra a dragon coming up in 15 seconds. And I'm just gonna stay around. I have my proto belt uh, in order to dodge the fist ultimate, but unfortunately, I have a bit, a bit of a mechanical misplay there where, because um, in my personal screen, like I have actually edited my screen and I put my uh, boot. Uh, slash boot and chime button right next to my ultimate button. So I actually accidentally fat fingered and launched my ultimate backwards instead of proto belling backwards, which pretty much screws up any chance of me surviving. Because if I proto bell backwards and uh, cast my ultimate correctly, I probably would have survived and be able to run away. But unfortunately, I don't. Uh, I don't do that, and I instead launch my ultimate backwards, thinking it was my proto belt. So I do screw up quite a bit there. And I have respawned, but I'm just gonna show off the team fight. Uh, no point showing me walking to the team fight. So now that I've reached, Fizz is actually going on me immediately. I missed my ult on the Fizz, but I do manage to shut him down. I believe it is a shutdown. No, it's not. So I do manage to kill him, I should say. And my entire team, uh, except the Zed, dies. Zed, uh, likely to get dived, I would say. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to back off and get back for health. Uh, go get health, and there's not nothing much I can do there. I have picked up my Yomus as well, so I will have the increased movement speed to try to make it to the mid lane, and I will clear the mid lane with my um, Q. Lulu has found herself in an over-aggressive position, which allows me to get a free kill on her. Pretty opportunistic of me, but of course Zed was at 1 HP, so I wouldn't really blame her for you know being that aggressive there, because she probably thought she could have gotten the Zed. So here... Um, I'm gonna ward the tri bush, and I'm not too sure of whether I should go clear the wave. So I'm just gonna try to just queue the wave, get all the uh, XP and the gold that I can. And Fizz is in the area, so I'm gonna be a bit careful about it. So here, Nami actually hits the bubble. I chain CC with my uh, ulti, and I actually get hit by the Fizz all. But surprisingly, it doesn't really do a lot of damage. I did barrier the out there but i expected it to at least break through the barrier but it does not it consumed my entire barrier but i did negate the fizzle and then the playful trickster and the q as well didn't actually really do that much damage to me i'm not sure why considering the fizz at that point i had a completed rabbit on safe cap and now a lich bane as well so i'm not really sure why he didn't do that much damage to me but yeah I, we, we managed to actually catch out the fizz and get a kill on him so pretty nice by us uh, at this point in time i have my evolved uh, mirror mana as well as my ghost blade so i should be doing quite a bit of damage already here i'm of course building into the Serata's grudge getting the caulfield's warhammer as well as the last whisper so pretty pretty close 500 gold away from the from the um, Serata's grudge itself which will be my probably my most major part but when you get your Serata's grudge you, you will be pretty strong by that point so here i'm actually going to pick up the red buff Varus taking a uh, buff is pretty awkward because as you guys can see your auto attacks don't really do a lot and your main damage is from your spells. So boom, I pick up the red buff and my team is going to fight so I cancel my back to see if my uh, see if I can join in the fight but the fight or I should say the skirmish you know doesn't really materialize so I'm just going to back to pick up my Sorella's Grudge which I of course can afford after picking up the 220 gold 
from red buff. So here, uh, you see a lot of people hovering in mid, so you know, you know, this being like a solo queue in uh, ranked, you know, you know a fight is going to break out soon, somebody's going to engage onto somebody, so it's true enough, a fight has ensued. So here, I out the Alistar just because I don't want to out the Wukong clone, so I'm just going to out the Alistar, we get the kill onto the Wukong, and we're going for the chase, Alistar is down, and see if we can catch the Lulu, probably not, we can get a bit of damage on her, but probably not a kill. Meanwhile, Vayne is playing split pusher and actually split pushing, which causes two of our teammates to actually recall to try to stop her, which forces the two of us to stop pushing. The better move would be probably for one person to recall, probably the Zed, because he has a higher kill pressure onto the Vayne. Probably Zed should recall and Gallo should have stayed, but of course it's solo queue, so uh, really hard to really control uh, anything there. Fizz ults the Trindomir, and I try to ult the Fizz, but I mispredicted where he's going. He's going the other direction, but... He Zhonya's but it doesn't really matter because I can't actually just pick him up solo, bolo, right there as my team is picking up the inhibitor, uh, not inhibitor, the second tier tower instead instead of uh, helping me pick up the fizz but it's alright, uh, everything goes fine and we're just gonna back off and fall back onto the dragon nope, we are not gonna fall back onto the dragon Trindemir is backing so we're not gonna do it I'm instead gonna get a reset as well, pick up some items. Red, you know, we're at 625 now, we're not doing too bad, not doing too bad at all. We get ourselves the Dirk. And yeah. Trindamira has actually gone for a wit's end this game uh, against the Fizz, I'm assuming, because that's the only form of magic damage. But he didn't actually go for the Slurry Charge Blade, which is probably the best item for Trindamira at the moment. So here I'm just going to help Trindamir out a little bit with the dragon. Lulu is you know, pushing over there and Wukong is dead. So basically this is a guaranteed dragon because Wukong's the enemy team's smite which is on the Wukong is gone. So here we pick up the dragon and Trindamir runs face first into a, a team fight. Here I'm getting solo, soloed by the, the Lulu so damn I get destroyed by the Lulu. Uh, I would say it's very embarrassing, which which it kind of is, but at the same time she's going for full damage, so it's not the worst not the worst in the world. It's not like I'm getting destroyed by a full support Lulu, it's a full AP Lulu. So here I honestly gotta say that Vayne messed up this fight big time. I, I do believe that the enemy team, if the Vayne played properly, could have destroyed this fight. Because Vayne would have wrecked the the Trindamir and the Galio, and if she didn't actually get uh, destroyed by the Zed, um she only got destroyed by the Zed because she actually gre uh, greeted for damage and stood in the Galio ulti. If she tumbled away from the Galio ulti and she didn't get knocked up, likely Zed would have focused somebody else and likely the Vayne would have actually stayed alive in order to DPS my entire team and probably my guess is that we would have gotten aced. I was just seeing the fight after I died and I was just thinking that oh this fight is done for because Vayne is just gonna carry the fight but instead Vayne sort of ends by getting knocked out by the Galio and then proceeds on to get full comboed by the Zed and essentially got destroyed by you know the Zed's ultimate so um, Vayne made a boo boo there in my opinion could have carried her team to a team fight victory but yeah she also has Ignite, so <laughs> it's really, really, and a really aggressive vein. So here my team is pinging for Baron. We see Lulu in the bot lane, and we see Wukong recalling, so we make the executive decision that we can't actually force the Baron out. Of course, Fizz and company have realized what we are uh, doing, and the, uh, Fizz and Alistar are actually onto it. Instead, Gallo is actually playing the distraction, and I'm joining in in the distraction as well, rooting them. <laughs> Uh, just basically keeping them away from the from the Baron. Wukong flashes in with his ultimate and I have to proto belt away to keep myself alive. And the Baron is very low so uh, we don't actually... Uh, Trindamir is just trying to secure it and he does thankfully. I'm gonna hit on over to actually get some health. And Lulu actually now... Lulu is playing split pusher. So the entire enemy team playing really smart. Whenever we're going for an objective, they are going for some some form of split push which is more or less the best trait that they can get so we get Baron but they get an inhibitor which is a you know arguably a good trait for them so here I, you know I get my ult off onto the Vayne, Vayne actually stays there so we can actually get damage off onto her condemns me away and destroys the the uh, Nami and I cannot reach the Vayne, Vayne actually ults really really late into the fight 
only really ulting to escape. Uh, meanwhile, Trinity is actually getting a double kill and Vayne is on his case, so I'm actually coming to back him up. Unfortunately, he goes for the fruit and actually dies to the Vayne, but thankfully, I'm over here who can actually uh, finish off the Vayne. Not sure why I flashed there, probably didn't, didn't really need to flash, but unfortunately, Fizz comes into the picture and destroys me. Uh, you know, he has his ultimate, so he destroys me. I tried to approach about a way to keep out of the range of his playful trickster, but unfortunately, it, um, you know, I, st I still got hit by the playful trickster and I get destroyed. So, uh, at the end of the day, uh, basically, the entire both entire teams just died to each other more or less, which is not good for my team because um, our entire team's worth of Baron buffs got removed. So, the whole Baron fight was for nothing and essentially, we just uh, lost the inhibitor for free, uh, essentially, since all our Baron buffs were removed. Now, if you guys take a look at what Galio is doing, Galio actually uh, inadvertently, he either did it on purpose but, or he inadvertently actually set up a slow push on the side of the, on the top side which will actually come into play later on. In the meantime, Zed is actually trying to uh, set up a trap but he sort of reveals his position by hitting the Squire's Bloom but uh, uh, Fizz still steps into the trap but becomes untargetable so Zed sort of messes up his combo and Fizz instead hits the fish onto Zed which Zed Zonyas and then flashes shadows and flashes away and somehow survives the encounter which I am very surprised by. Now I make it to the fight and of course the Elder um, Elder Cloud Dragon is up so of course the both teams are going to be coming for it and you know enemy wards all over the place so we're going to have to destroy that. Zed is out of the picture and Galio is actually kind of doing a slip push of his own so we are going like 3v5 at this point in time so we don't really want to take the dragon fight instead we're just going the, the, the enemy team apparently didn't want the dragon fight either but if I were them I would be forcing the dragon now because Zed obviously is low HP and Galio you can see him in the top lane so I would have forced the dragon there if I were the enemy team but they do not so uh, here me and Trinamira trying to clear out the the um, bot wave but in the meantime the slow push that Galio had set up actually is crashing into the enemy's inhibitor tower so Wukong you can actually see he's backing Fizz is already back at the base and this gives us the signal to go for a free Elder Dragon because Wukong has clearly backed but he, of course he didn't realize he backed on a ward but he has backed and the enemy's team smite is back in their base so we essentially can get a free dragon as a matter of fact Trindamir can actually solo it so I don't even have to go there to help him out I'm instead just gonna push uh, out the bot lane and here we secure the dragon of course Lulu can possibly steal the dragon Lulu instead um, you know gets wombo comboed by everybody boom there goes the Lulu and here comes my out this is how you play Varus you stand far far away and you just shoot off your arrows just boom you can barely see uh, people that I'm shooting because mostly some of them are off screen but here I'm actually getting off a lot of damage just from afar here I got into close quarters with the vein no, not much choice there I pick up a double kill cut and I cut off the fizz as well for the triple and that is the game so enemy team is aced our entire team is alive and that is the game now overall my score 10 for a 9 now not the best kind of score on Ivaris probably less deaths would be more uh, desirable but you know what can you do about it we still played pretty well this game so with that uh, out of the way uh, that is the game so uh, I'll leave you guys with the stats as usual so thank you guys for watching the video and goodbye